consistency of seeing all of you guys rock it with the power foods. It has been amazing. I have been so just, I mean, I turn this um, Facebook on and I just look at it and I'm like, this is so great. You guys are out doing me. I mean, like I'm doing like meat and salt and you know, my green shake and my coconut, like almost every day, just because it's so easy. And I've been just, I've been so happy to see how excited you guys have gotten about combining these power foods in ways that I've never even thought about. There's so much good stuff. I can't wait till Corona's over because I'm coming to find you to get some of those foods. Some of you chefs out there, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to um, meet with you guys for the first time once we get out. Because when we first started, I was supposed to be coming out to California to meet all of you. And, and then we, you know, last minute had to postpone. So it's just been so fun to get to know you guys and to see your enthusiasm to heal and to be leveling up. And it's just been so fun to hear people's transformation stories and the results that we're getting so quickly. I was a little bit nervous about doing it long distance because normally I can see people each week and I, you know, before they even talk, I see their bodies changing sizes and their color getting better. And, you know, people talk about little things like their nails are growing for the first time ever, even before they start to show weight loss. And, um, you know, people that are letting go of chronic pain and, you know, I can see them like walking and they're, you know, in, in the room where they used to be a little bit more stiff. And it's just, it's, it's really blown my mind actually to be able to have, instead of just seeing people once a week, which is normally what I do with live classes for a check-in to really see the updates. And I love seeing everybody's videos when they're going out for their walks and, all the stuff you guys are doing with your families. It's just, it's been a whole new experience for me too, doing it in this way, but it's been super fun. And there's a lot of it that I feel like has been even, like we've been even more connected because we do get to see like the daily, like whatever every day I'm doing. And so it's, it's been a new thing and it's been really fun. And um, I'm so happy to see so many so many faces. It's just so cool to look at the screen and see so many faces lighting up and uh, seeing your names with your faces is just is so cool. Um, so I want to make sure we've had a few people that have not had stellar results or who are still trying to figure things out. And I felt like the more I heard and got comments from the coaches in the last couple of days, I wanted to make sure that everybody is really rock solid with the foundation because the whole objective of Fresh Start is to be able to learn how to unlock your body's innate ability to heal itself. And that, that first starts with optimizing digestion. And once we get that right, because 70% of the immune system lies in the quality and the health of your gut lining, and your gut lining, it's a direct signal. Your gut brain connection is like immediate. So if your digestion is unhealthy, out of balance, your brain is not going to be good. You're going you're gonna to you're gonna be moody. You're going to be in a bad mood. Your blood sugar is going to be up and down. Even if you're eating the right foods, if you have an unhealthy microbiome or food isn't combining right because your digestive capacity is down, you're never going to be able to recover that innate that you know, God-given ability of uh, the microbiome to be able to um, open the door to unlock your optimal immune capacity, which means you know being healthy enough to be able to fight off a virus. So if it passes by you, you've got a strong microbiome, so it you're not a suitable host for that virus to thrive and survive in your body and and you know take you on as a host. And it's the same with cancer when we you know, it takes 10 to 20 years for cancer to develop in someone's body to the point where it's the size of the head of a pin, like a sewing, like the, the head of a, you know, the tip of a pinpoint. It has to be that big for cancer to be detected in a scan. And it, over 10 to 20 years of practicing Fresh Start, even if you already have something blooming in your body now, if you learn how to starve cancer cells at, by optimizing your immune system and achieving hormone balance and 
applying these principles will enable autophagy, which is your body's ability to selectively choose to kill off mutated or damaged cells. So whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or a chronic kind of stiffness and pain, or your body needs to be activated for the fight of your life to fight off cancer cells, the principles that we're doing right now are so foundational. I was going to say basic, but if they were basic, everyone would naturally know how to do this. So my goal is that in our time together, that you guys will become so confident in how your bodies work that you can live without fear of waiting for the other shoe to drop, of waiting for another medication to be pres just prescribed or feeling like, oh, I've got this really weird pain. I wonder if it's the C word, you know, it's, it's really awful to live in fear like that. And so many of the people that I deal with are in that place. And that's the most rewarding thing to me when I come out of teaching, teaching the classes is that people have the confidence to trust their bodies and they know how to really play the game to win. So I'm so excited for you guys to be here and we're going to just back up and do a quick refresher over the beginning things because we've lost a couple people. There's a couple people that are not losing weight yet or they have some digestive upset. And so I wanna make sure that we catch everybody right now because we can go on from where fresh start is the starting point. It's the launch pad. It's the place that you will always come back to for the rest of your life. I always say like, if you go on a cruise, you eat everything on the entire ship. It's Please mute yourself. Okay, can you guys hear me now? All right, all right, great. So I always like to say, if you go on a cruise or for your birthday, you can come back and be, you know, empowered to be able to get right back. It doesn't, you know, you can't ruin yourself in one birthday meal. You really can't. Anything that you eat in an hour on your birthday, it, it's not going to do any damage. It's going to affect anything for the rest of your life. Um, but if you do that on everybody's birthday around you, you know, then you've got the chronic problem. So I want to make sure that one, you feel empowered to be able to enjoy life for what you want to get out of it. So if your desire is to not live in chronic pain, to have a fat, a body that's naturally burning fat and you wake up energetic and you feel like moving your body, that is the place where anti-aging medicine really comes to the forefront of, of experiencing it and what it is. So, um, that is what we accomplish when we get into being fat adapted. So we're gonna, I'm gonna explain in a little bit greater detail what fat adapted is. Um, this is something you should be it's, it's starting to experience right now. Um, but I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about calculating the macros. So we, just in case there's people who have not downloaded the Card Manager app yet, it's really important to do that because that's what is like the easy pass for this program. But I am gonna go over one more time how to calculate your macros. So for anyone starting the program that needs to lose fat, who's insulin resistant, who's diabetic, your goal is to get to an optimal fat loss or your goal is to optimize your immune system. Either way, we're gonna, you have to get keto adapted first even if you feel like, oh, I could gain five pounds and it wouldn't hurt me, but I'm really worried about this coronavirus because I have a lot of wheezing and asthma, your body might be carrying a ton of inflammation and you cannot achieve that autophagy or that metabolic state where your, your, your immune system kicks in and naturally picks off and selectively targets those damaged cells in the lining of your lungs, which is why you have asthma all the time or wheezing or symptoms like that, your body has to have time away from digesting food in order to be able to access that special place called autophagy. You have to have at least, for adults, you have to have at least 14 hours without eating 
in order for your body to get to that place, which is really very easy because, you know, all night long, if you go from even eight o'clock at night till eight in the morning, that's already 12 hours. So then if you don't eat after six o'clock at night, you're boom, you're at the magic 14 hours. So anyone who's not eating after six or before eight, that that's the magic number. 14 hours is when your body starts to selectively dispose of mutated and damaged cells. So even if you were here joining this group because you're fighting cancer, getting to a place where you've achieved the ability to burn your fat as fuel, your stored body fat, or the fat that you're consuming as fuel. Once you become fat adapted, your body can flex back and forth equally as well, and it can burn the food that you're eating, or it can burn your stored fat. It can just switch gears without any discomfort. It's very easy, and you have a lot of stored energy. It's not even like shifting in a race car. You don't even feel the difference between when you're burning fat that you're eating or burning fat that is coming out of your butt. It, your body just switches back and forth. That's the metabolic flexibility that we're trying to achieve here. And unfortunately, people have all different levels of metabolic damage. Some people have come into this program and they, they didn't have diabetes. They didn't have metabolic damage. They haven't tried 42 different weight loss plans and thought, I'm never going to be able to lose fat because everything I try doesn't work for me. And then I end up weighing more than I did before I started. That's what happens with most programs that are, you know, even doctor supervised weight loss programs, because people are in a carb burning or a sugar burning metabolism. There is nothing about that that reverses inflammation, that optimizes health. The more up and down cycles of sugar based fat or sugar based diet systems, the more sometimes you at you end up with more inflammation afterwards than if you've never dieted to begin with so i just wanted to start that off by reminding you why you're here i know that in week three and in going into our final week people are starting to get a little bit weary and i just want to encourage you that you are almost there that it is so worth it because not only do you do you prevent your risk of something really horrible like long term like cancer but now you're getting to the point where you're, if you haven't already gotten to being fat adapted, you're about to get to a whole new place with your healing and your metabolic flexibility to where your body's going to be doing things that it's never done before. And even though you're getting older, your energy is going to be better when you wake up in the morning. And even though more time is going by, your skin is going to look better than it did before. And because you're integrating your exercise with the rising of the sun and you're not eating after dark, you're able to optimize your hormone balance in a much faster and a whole new way to where you're building more mitochondria, the little powerhouses or the energy cells in our muscles, which enable us to be able to make more energy and make more lean muscle tissue, which is what allows us to even burn fat when we're asleep. So, if you have extra fat on your body when you came into the program, like most of us do, it does take a certain amount of fat to just be healthy. A lot of our vital organs and the brain, 70% fat. So we're not trying to get to be, you know, as little body fat as possible. That, that's not healthy either because we need, you know, around 20% body fat unless we're, you know, for women, less is healthier than that for men. But um, so just going to recap how we get to being fat adapted. You make notes if you're missing any of these things, and we'll, we'll make sure that the leader that is your mentor that brought you here, I'm sure there's somebody that's on our wellness advisor program that sponsored everybody that's here. So we want to make sure that everyone does not go past today without knowing exactly how to calculate the right amount of food for what your goal is. So for everyone that needs to lose fat, it's 20 grams of carbs. That doesn't change. If you have metabolic damage, like you're already insulin resistant, you have elevated blood pressure, your waistline is bigger than your hips, you are diabetic. Um, let me see what else. Any kind of hormone imbalances that are um, related to fertility, um, you're probably going to have to stay on 20 carbs for a very, very long time. 
in order to be able to reverse all of the information inflammation in your body at least four to six months until you get to your ideal weight. Um, and then after that, you'll be able to strategically plan celebration meals without completely undoing everything you've done so that your body will stay balanced, energetic, and thriving with skin that's looking younger as you get older. It's, it's really amazing. Sleeping better. Um, a lot of people actually tell, you know, tell me that their hair color has gone from gray to the color starting to come back to it, which is amazing. And that's what happens when your mitochondria get recharged from burning fat as fuel instead of sugar. So um, first, we removed all the anti-nutrients. Everybody knows this. If, if it's not on the power foods list, you just don't eat it. So we've replaced all of the calories from sugar, starch, and vegetable oils with only the essentials, the healthy fats, the proteins, our, um, and we're replenishing nutrient deficiencies with our strategic supplementation. So everybody's daily chart in each group looks a little bit different. So I'm not gonna review those tonight, but just make sure you're following the daily chart for the group that you signed up in. It does take about three to four months to be able to replenish mineral deficiencies. Some of the most important things, and this is why it's in every single group and some groups get two bottles per month, MagnaCal D. Everyone is deficient in magnesium and it's the most important vital electrolyte to keep your blood sugar stable. So people who are having issues with constipation still, I would say this is not normal. So you need to identify yourself to your coach, your wellness advisor after the call tonight so that we can figure out what's going on because there are things that are missing from your daily life if you're constipated three weeks in. That shouldn't be the case. Magnesium deficiency is number one cause of constipation. So please make sure that you're taking your MagnaCal D and that you are taking it like clockwork at the same time each day. If you've already been taking four per day, two at two different meals, Go ahead and add in a third set if you're struggling with constipation. Just take an extra set before you go to bed. It will help to increase your sleep. The same essential electrolytes, magnesium and calcium, they have to be in a balanced ratio for peristalsis to happen. Peristalsis is the timing of the muscles that control our digestive tract. So when you swallow in your mouth, when you swallow a bite of food, it's kind of like waves of the ocean. You know, it squeezes like a little tube of muscle that go, you know, starts in your mouth and goes all the way through your body out the other end. And having the right balance of calcium to magnesium is really, really important. And because most people are magnesium deficient, and the more stressed out you are, the more you burn up your magnesium. If you've been taking MagnaCal D and you're still constipated, you're still not getting enough magnesium because for whatever your stress load is, for however deficient you were when you came into the program, which 80% of people are already, but if you, you just haven't replenished your magnesium enough, especially if your stress has been through the roof, you're burning it as you're making adrenaline, so there's none left to help with your digestion and to keep your blood sugar stable. So if you're constipated, you're very, very likely not losing weight either to where you should be. So. Just go ahead, the other things that you can go ahead and ramp up and take an extra two at nighttime. The other thing is a lot of people that are on antidepressants, um, diuretic medication, or if you've been on antibiotics or are on an antibiotic, those things will greatly affect constipation as well. So um, you need to probably go out of your way to either, if you're on an antibiotic, you need to get a good quality probiotic. Two thirds of the volume of our stool Every day is not the food that we're eating, it's the waste from the healthy bacteria that are in our gut that are like our little Pac-Man that you know chew up all of the fiber and debris and the waste that they generate is actually two thirds of the volume of the stool. So if you're not having, um, with getting rid of grains, um, most people get rid of chronic um, hardened or like little balls types of stool once they get rid of grains. Um, but this far in, if you haven't had any grains, you probably need more magnesium. You might also need a probiotic. The other thing is people may not be doing enough salt and they may not be doing enough coconut oil. So I want to review the coconut oil guidelines tonight as well, because 
if you guys don't have the foundational nutrient recipe for your body down, you're not going to learn how to adjust it and get really strategic in the next level. So, um, okay. So salt, um, if you're constipated, make sure the salt and lemon juice video from day one, make sure that you go read that. Basically, if you need to get unconstipated quickly, you can do a pure protein day, which is one of the strategies that we're going to talk about for accelerated weight loss. It also does a wonder for self-cleaning the digestive tract because you fast for a longer period of time um, while taking with your water, you put in a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt and one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. That's kind of the magic combo. You can take that up to 10 times a day. You can put that in all of your water. Every cup of water, you can put a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Make sure that you account for those lemon juice carbs on your Carb Manager app. Every tablespoon of lemon juice is one carb. So you can have up to 10 servings a day of that. Basically, it's electrolyte water. When you put the pink salt or Celtic sea salt in there, only the raw salt that has the full 73 trace minerals and everything else. You don't want Morton's Umbrella Girl table salt, just isolated sodium, because it's a chemical. It doesn't have the same action. Um, it's been stripped of all the other nutrients. It does not have the same function in the body as whole, real unprocessed salt. Most salt is heated at over 500 degrees. All the minerals are stripped off and sold off to supplement companies to make good quality minerals. And then the sodium that's in the Morton's blue umbrella girl thing is sold off as just you know cheap isolated sodium chloride and it doesn't have the same beneficial effects as real salt. So if you're constipated, um, because of the way our body responds with sending water to the digestive tract, and also when we're insulin resistant, the kidneys can't regulate our fluid as well. And if you're too low in salt, guess what your body does? Even if you're not eating any carbs, if your body is too low in salt, it sends out this panic signal to your kidneys and your kidneys send out a panic signal and say, okay, release insulin because the only way to pull more salt in and enough fluid into the kidneys is by releasing insulin. So even if you're not eating any sugar, starch, or vegetable oils, if you're not eating enough salt, if you're just eating a plain piece of meat and not seasoning it with real salt yourself, you can be releasing insulin just because of the, the electrolyte deficiency. So nobody wants that. So make sure that you're doing salt. If you are, if you are constipated now and you need to do that quickly, just tomorrow when you start or even tonight before bed, even though it's getting late, that much of a carb and salt is not going to hurt anybody's, you know, it's basically an electrolyte. So it'll help you to sleep better. A few people the first week um, were having palpitations or they felt like their heart was racing and they thought, you know, maybe some have elevated anxiety as well. Um, but, you know, the, there aren't any stimulants in any of our products except for the Rejuvenex does have natural caffeine in it. So unless you're overdoing that or doing too much coffee, there's really nothing else that would be causing um, any kind of anxiety or feelings of stress. Um, there, there's no products that we have. There's no food that would be triggering that. It would be what you're not doing. It would be that you're not doing enough of the salt. And you don't really have to measure it. I know a lot of people do like, you know, metrics to know like how much I should be doing every day. So I say generally between two and three teaspoons of salt. So if you were to do a quarter of a teaspoon in every glass of water, you get, and you did it 10 times a day, which you really only need to do it two or three times a day. You know, you can do one glass in the morning when you first wake up, just, just to kind of jumpstart your digestion. If you don't have a full bowel movement in another hour, you know, have the, the salt and lemon juice mixture again, but for every um, one cup of the um, tablespoon of lemon juice and quarter of a teaspoon of pink salt, it, it only counts as one carb. And if you do that 10 times a day, it's still only two and a half teaspoons of salt per day. So it's well within 
the guidelines of three to 4,000 milligrams of sodium per day because only about 60% of salt is, is actual sodium. So um, very healthy, it'll help with energy levels. Um, it could be what you're not doing. It could be that you're low in your magnesium, you're low in your sodium, you're low in potassium. There's a little bit of all of that in the pink salt and that's why we use that. It's really a core fundamental necessity like our bodies are mostly water and salt. And after that, the, the two biggest things we need are the essential proteins and the essential fats. So that's what we're gonna talk about next, calculating our macros. Wanna make sure that everybody is, um, you know, getting that good digestion piece down. So another thing that could um, be helpful in overcoming the constipation is just, you know, constipation is typically due to fiber that your body cannot break down because you either, your peristalsis is off because you're mineral deficient or your probiotic, your probiotic flora is off because you've been on antibiotics or you're drinking chlorinated tap water. So if you're drinking chlorinated tap water, even like bottled water from Dasani or Deer Park and those plastic bottles, they are often chlorinated tap water that's just been carried across state lines and repackaged at a water bottling facility. They're not cleaner, they're not better, they usually have chlorine in them. And if you're drinking chlorinated water, every time you sip, it's sterilizing your whole microbiome. And then it's wiping out your innate immunity. It's killing your ability to fight viruses and bacteria and it's wiping you out. So if you don't have a purity water bottle yet, find out how to get one. Everybody around here knows where to get those things. They are like the easy pass for the best water on the planet. Do not drink chlorinated water. If you need a probiotic because you've been on an antibiotic, you can also talk to your wellness advisor and we can get you guys connected to a quality product that will help replenish that. So that would be kind of worst case scenario. Everybody else who's not on an antibiotic right now or who hasn't just been on one should be able to have healthy digestion by just doing the MagnaCal D, getting enough salt and water, and then just give yourself a couple days off of the giving greens um, and the fiber because you already have undigested fiber. Probiotics job is to chomp up the fiber that we eat and turn it into nutrients. So if you already have undigested fiber in there that's like a brick, adding more fiber is gonna be like brick on brick on brick. That's not good. So just give yourself a break from the giving greens if you are constipated. Go ahead and, and do the lemon and salt water as many times as it takes throughout the day. Keep doing your sun formula along with that. You can fast for a longer period of time until you get your water in, you know, probably not more than once per hour on the, on the lemon and salt drinks. Um, you can add in a third serving of sun formula. It will also keep you in that, that fasting, that autophagy place longer where you're killing bad cells. So some people are constipated because they have parasites. Um, and a lot of people are, I mean, they're in a lot of foods. It's not just people that travel to foreign countries that get them pretty much everybody who I deal with when I test, everybody's got some kind of parasite causing an issue. So another thing about the pink salt is it helps the body to naturally purge parasites. You probably won't ever see them, but increasing the time where you're fasting from going all night long the night before, and then just doing the sun, the lemon water and the salt, for as long as you can until you get hungry and then give yourself a break from fiber and just go right on to fulfilling your protein goal for the day. That will help you achieve better digestive timing than anything else. If that doesn't work after three days, then you probably do need a probiotic. So if you get uncomfortably painful, you know, get some milk of magnesia, just isolated plain magnesium, milk of magnesia, and then just drink that. If the only laxative that doesn't have a stimulant effect to it. It's a type of magnesium that's not absorbed. It's not like our dietary supplement magnesium. So if you need to, you know, if you're really uncomfortable and in a painful situation, just go ahead and do milk of magnesia and then get right back on the program, making sure you're doing your water and salt and at least, at least one serving of the water, uh, salt and lemon juice in the morning. So, um, that's really, really critical um, is making sure that digestion is key. The other thing that could be sabotaging your digestion 
um, from being optimal at this point is if you are not, if you've had metabolic damage or you've had gut damage, which most people do at the beginning, because if, you're, if you've been eating wheat, everybody has ele elevated zonulin levels, which is a um, molecule that's generated in response to the wheat that's grown in America. Anything genetically modified, um, which is, unless you have like an Amish farmer that lives near you and you can grow your own, grow, grind your own grain, you're getting GMOs and it destroys your gut lining, which again, destroys your immune system. So um, where people are coming in with um, gut damage, um, getting that magnesium in is, is really, really key. And then um, the next step would be to make sure that you are separating your proteins from all of your vegetables. So if you have metabolic damage, gut damage is a challenge for you, or you still, if you've had IBS, Crohn's, um, any kind of colitis or anything like that, you're gonna do better to just keep your meat with just coconut oil and salt and keep it completely separated from anything in the whole vegetable kingdom. So not even avocados or olives along with your meat. Keep those types of fats along with your vegetable meal or giving greens, whatever you're doing per what group you're in. And then if you're having any type of digestive challenges, whether it's constipation, gas, floating, or just feeling full, don't put an avocado or olives with your meat. Just give yourself a break for at least another five to seven days of just separating everything vegetable-wise by at least two hours and just doing meat water, meat, water, salt, and coconut oil for your animal protein meals. And just give yourself a digestive rest and things will just kick right in. You'll also be able to extract a lot more protein in the digestive process when you don't have any other type of garnishes with it. So, um, you know, feel free to dress up your lettuce, make avocado dressing, all kinds of herbs, whatever you want. They're really high in potassium, which is wonderful um, to get in. That also helps. It's in a very important um, electrolyte to help boost energy if your energy is sagging. So a couple people have mentioned um, heart racing, constipation, or energy just hasn't hasn't gotten there yet. So if your energy, you know, if you're having a little energy envy and you're seeing other people are like, woo, I feel great, I'm exercising more, and you're just like, man, I still hate exercise. It makes the thought of exercise makes me want to take a nap. You know, if that's you, you just have more metabolic damage. Your body has had more years of inflammation than than the other people that you're seeing. So you just have to give it a little bit more time. You know, it t it's for some people, it's it's 20 years of damage that's accumulated in your body, and it's going to take four to six months of replenishing with therapeutic amounts of supplements and completely abstaining from all of the anti-nutrients for your body to be able to come back up out of that metabolic suppressed state to be able to heal itself. But every day that you're practicing the fresh start power foods and you're getting your supplements in, any movement that you do, even if you haven't started exercising yet because you have some kind of chronic pain or something still, every single day, even if you just start doing, you know, walking around the house more, you know, when your body, your body will start to shift up as you continue to fuel it. And as the supplements start replenishing those deficiencies, it'll bring you back up out of that place of hibernation. And I promised you, if you stick with this and give your body a chance to heal itself, you will get to that place where your mitochondria, those little, little energy cells in your muscle cells, they'll start to recharge just like, a, just like a, your phone on the charging dock. You'll, you'll, your cell batteries will start to increase and then you'll start to feel like, I really feel like exercising today. It will happen. I promise you it will happen. Make sure that you don't miss an opportunity to take your supplements. Make sure that you are salting your food. Make sure you don't miss getting enough coconut oil. If you don't get enough fat from coconut oil specifically, you have to replace the food, the carbohydrates and the junk calories that you were eating before with coconut oil. It's like, that is like 
the magic um what do you call those those logs i don't remember but those logs that you can put in a campfire and they instantly light <laughs> coconut oil is like the torch for waking up your metabolism and if you take that you'll have energy within the first three days if you don't if you haven't taken it you're probably feeling more tired because you're not getting enough calories from fat that does that you cannot store coconut oil as fat the way it's metabolized it has a different molecule it's a completely different structure chemically than all other fats it's very special there isn't any other fat you can substitute for it so if you hate the taste of it you have to get one that is purified that doesn't taste like anything so that's why i always recommend the tropical traditions pure coconut oil so that one has been it's all processed by hand in the Philippines, but it has been steamed deodorized, so it has no scent, no taste. It, you can put it on chicken. It doesn't taste like coconut. You, you mix it in with your eggs. It, it, it really is lovely. I don't notice the difference between that and butter. So I love it. If you just give it a try, you will get to that place where you will torch your metabolism and wake up your cells because you have to have that to get your energy recharged it's like you have to get that to get out of the pit so if you're struggling with energy and you've missed any of those things you've got to get on board with doing all of these little checklists because if you if you're not doing everything i've talked about so far you're not actually on fresh start you're on your own modified plan and that's why it's not working you have to get on all these foundational things in order to nourish your body strong so um Okay, so at the beginning, um, everybody's on 20, 20 carbohydrates. People who are super fitness enthusiasts, you, I said you guys could start at 30. Um, now, around day 21, the people who are super fitness enthusiasts and who are exercising a couple hours a day, you guys can move up to 50 carbs if you're not trying to lose any more fat. If you're done with fat burning, you can move up to 50 carbs. If you're exercising for an hour a day vigorously and you're not trying to lose any more body fat, I'm repeating myself because I want to make sure everybody gets this because I don't want anyone messaging me in the group chat going, I went up to 50 carbs and I gained three pounds. <laughs> you can't go there. I'm just, I'm just, I am talking all about fat loss here and I don't want the people who are waiting to hear about muscle. When am I going to get to build muscle? I don't want those people to take a nap on me. So you can go up to 50 carbs if you're a vigorous exerciser you've achieved your fat loss goal and this is huge at least 25 grams of fiber you can't do 50 carbs if half of that is not fiber a minimum of half of the amount of carbs you have if you move up above 20 carbs a minimum of half of the amount of carbs has to be fiber and don't don't do this net carb thing. When you set up your carb manager, you select it to tell you the total carbs per day, not the net carbs. Net carbs can get all crazy because there's certain things like the, the, a lot of the keto approved sweeteners that you'll find on Instagram and wherever have things like inulin and things that can still upset your blood sugar, even though they have fiber in them. And then it totally messes up your calculation. We have people who think they're doing everything like religiously right to the T and they're not losing weight or they're not achieving their goal or they get tired again. It's because of all these wacky substitute sweeteners. So don't do net carbs. We only count total carbs. And as you, if you're a vigorous exerciser, you're not wanting to lose any more fat, you can go ahead and start adding in some of those other sweeteners. You can go up to 50 grams of carbs if at least half of them 25 are from fiber so don't deduct do straight um so that's pretty much it for your carb adjustment everybody else who's still needing to lose more fat burn more fat achieve their um new metabolic set point we're on the 20 grams of carbs a day train for a long time and that's the maximum if you want to have a day where you're having, you're like, you know what? I feel a little bloated. 
and I just don't want to do any fiber today because I'm going to give myself a digestive rest and you want to do all salt, lemon water, um, coconut oil, meat and salt, that's great. That'll give you 10 carbs a day, half. It'll all come from lemon juice in your water, but that'll really accelerate. And I'm going to teach you how to pair that um, daily schedule along with um, adjusting your protein intake to do what's called a pure protein day. So what we're doing is we're learning how to adjust our protein and our fats. So for, for all, everybody else, all of the rest of us now, I'm not talking to the, 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 the you know, fitness elitists anymore right now um, who are doing more carbs. I'm just talking about all of us who are eating 20 grams of carbs per day maximum. You can always eat less than that if you want to. We have some different strategies that we can start to employ once you become fat adapted. So if you are feeling more energetic in the morning, if you're feeling like, oh, I take my sun formula, I drink my water, um, I don't even feel hungry. It's one o'clock in the afternoon and this is no effort at all for me to think when am I going to break my fast because I feel energetic. I don't feel tired. I don't feel like I have an earthquake in my stomach because I'm so hungry anymore. That means you have done it. You're in the fat adapted lane. So you're going to be able to start doing a little bit, playing with things a little bit more. Um, and so it's going to be like a one, two, three day schedule. So I'm going to explain the pure protein day first. So once you move into being fat adapted, you multiply your lean body mass by 0.8 to get your ideal amount of protein per day. And now we are not deducting 50 grams per day for the sum. We, are, we started out with a higher amount of fat at the beginning, and now we're gonna learn how, and so the fat was really fueling us, and when you get to be fat adapted, you're more energetic, all of that. We can now switch our protein up to achieve metabolic flexibility and to trick our bodies into burning more fat. Because if you do the exact same thing every single day and your body is static, your metabolism will adjust and it'll downshift. So we don't want to do that. We're learning how to outsmart our bodies. And see, the body, it doesn't want to give up the fat. It, our body's number one goal is to survive. And so it, it, it's, a, it's not a normal state to achieve fat loss. So we have to continue to work ahead and pay attention to what's going in your body, understand what cues it's giving you so that you can continue to rotate and um, achieve more strategic fat loss to accelerate your goals. So if you, if you want to stay doing the same thing, you know, six out of seven days a week, because mentally you're just like, I just need this to be easy right now. You might have a lot going on. Just one day a week, you're going to have a little bit more protein and you're not going to have any extra fat. You're going to limit your fat grams to 50 grams of fat per day. Now you should be getting for your coconut oil, I'm gonna review the minimum amount of coconut oil each day because first of all, everyone needs to get their coconut oil in every day. So for your weight category, I'm gonna give you a number and you just pick this number and write it down. For whatever your weight is, if you're between 90 and 130 pounds, your minimum amount of coconut oil each day is gonna be three tablespoons. You can take this as a one tablespoon, you can add it into your, uh, to do a hot water with lemon and salt in the morning. You can take a tablespoon and saute, you know, some vegetables in it at lunch and another tablespoon to saute some eggs at night. You've got to make sure, like if you cook it, if you cook chicken or a burger, it doesn't really soak up the oil like when you're cooking eggs. So you've got to make sure that, you know, when you cook that chicken or whatever, that you pour all the coconut oil out or even you know, pour it on a spoon, make sure you take it. You know, make sure you're actually ingesting it all. So 130, up to 130 pounds, three tablespoons of coconut oil minimum per day. And that's the minimum. If you're eating all boiled chicken breast that hardly has any fat in it, 
when you go to put all of these things in your carb manager, it's going to say, wow, you need to have 60 more grams of fat today to get up to your keto threshold. Well, you can do that and you can make some fun sauces or you can add an avocado at lunchtime or, um, but when we're, when we're, we're basically learning how to use fat as a lever. Your minimum threshold of coconut oil is we don't want anyone to have less than 40 to 50 grams of fat from coconut oil every day. The other days you can add in other fats. You can have a ribeye steak that's higher in fat. You can have, um, you know, an avocado. There's a little bit in hemp seeds. There's um, on the pure protein day, we're going to back up those extra fats and only get fat from coconut oil and you're going to adjust according to how many grams of fat that you need um, and you're going to make sure that you're getting first your coconut oil in and just leaving those others out for one day because when you're fat adapted and your body's been used to burning 120 grams of fat per day if all of a sudden you're only consuming an extra 50 grams from the coconut oil guess what your body just can access that stored body fat really quickly without any discomfort, without any cravings, without feeling hungry, your body's going to go right into your stored fat for that one day that you just stop eating the fat because it's already in that automatic fat adapted mode. So um, up to 130 pounds, three tablespoons per day, 131 to 180 pounds, a minimum of five tablespoons per day. So that's two and a half tablespoons with two meals or uh, two tablespoons with your meal. And then you can do a tablespoon in a hot drink. It's great. Again, it helps with digestion and it also helps to kill my, you know, anything that's very antimicrobial for the gut lining. It helps to kill candida. It helps to kill the bad bacteria that grow up after you've been on an antibiotic. It really helps to support your microbiome to naturally thrive. So if you're having a hard time finding a way to mix it in with your food, just go ahead and put it in a cup of hot water with lemon and salt and have that in between. It doesn't count, you know, as a meal. You can have that in your fasting window because one tablespoon isn't, you know, enough calories to, to wreck that for you. You'll, you'll keep on burning fat. So, all right. So then over 180 pounds, it's up to six tablespoons a day. Everybody over it, I shouldn't say up to, I said that wrong. It's a minimum of six tablespoons a day. So do, you know, two, three times. I love to do a tablespoon of it um, in something hot, especially on colder days. It's getting warmer um, in a lot of places too. So if you don't like doing a hot drink or if you don't like cooking with it, some people are just so used to steaming their food and they prefer to prepare things that way and it's hard to get the coconut oil out of the pan. You can also just do a mixture. Um, I used to call them coconut, lemon coconut meltaways. You can actually just take a tablespoon of lemon juice, preferably fresh squeezed, a tablespoon of coconut oil, and a pinch of salt, and mix it to, you know, just pour it into little ice cube trays. And um, if you actually put it in the blender with a little piece of the lemon peel, it will all emulsify and, and get creamy and then you can pour it in. But if I'm feeling lazy, I literally just pour it all into ice cube trays and then I can either take that and put it in my mug and add the hot water to it. And I don't have to measure it each day. It's really best to start with a fresh lemon and some fresh peel. But if you do a little bit of the, the zest, um, just the yellow part, and you put it in the blender with the lemon juice and the coconut oil and say you do you know eight tablespoons of each, that way you've got eight servings. And you can just, you can eat them like a little cube of fudge or something. That also really helps with um, constipation. And even with little kids, I used to do this all the time when my kids were little and they would run into issues when we were traveling or something. Um, it also tastes great if you add a scoop of Beauty Boost to that. Um, if you're trying to give it to your kids, it, get, it doesn't add any um, calories and it doesn't, it's only low glycemic sweeteners, but if you've had a problem with sluggish digestion, it's actually better if you don't sweeten it because the bitter taste on your tongue when you have the, the sour, it actually helps to secrete more digestive juices and it helps the bile flow, which is one of your self-cleaning agents um, 
in the liver and the gallbladder area. So don't sweeten it with Beauty Boost if you've had um, any kind of sluggish digestion. But if you want to share with the family or if you have little kids that want to need, need some support, go ahead and um, put some Beauty Boost in there. Um, okay. All right, so once hunger is not controlling your day, your energy increases, you can easily take your sun tablets with the water, lemon, and salt. Um, and exercise is starting to feel good. Do what you can to increase your exercise. Whatever you're doing, do a little bit more each week. So if you're walking 30 minutes, try to do 40. You know, exercise is also the next best way to activate autophagy and it actually builds muscle so unlike fasting sometimes people you'll you'll hear sometimes people are recommending fasting for three to five days at a time to cut weight but you always sacrifice muscle when you do that and we don't want to lose muscle mass especially the older that we get the muscle is like what keeps us strong it also is what gives us the ability to burn fat while we're asleep. So when you're doing this kind of a plan, instead of just fasting for extended days, um, when you get to access that place where you feel that shift in your body's energy, just do more exercise because that recharges the mitochondria even more powerfully. But it also has the added benefit that it is increasing the size of your muscles. No matter where you're coming from, exercise is always going to be able to increase your muscles, and help you access that special self-cleaning, self-healing place of autophagy where the body kicks out all of the bad cells. So whether that's cancer, whether that's a virus, you want to be in a place. Um, you know, like I said, if you're not eating after dark, I'm going to say six o'clock at night. Um, the minimum amount of time is eight o'clock in the morning. If you can even go another four hours and not eat until noon, then you've had four whole hours where you're accelerating your healing as far as your body's ability to kick out those bad cells, but also break down body fat stores. So if you lost a lot of weight the first week and then you haven't lost anything since then, you might try doing an every other day where you push your morning meal back a little bit. Or if you are having increased energy, and you're not getting hungry, so hunger down, energy up, that's the green light to where you're like, okay, I'm ready to push my intermittent fasting window a little bit more. Today might be a good day for me to do protein. You always want to listen to your body. If you're hungry, if you're physically hungry, you shouldn't push yourself past your fasting. If you're doing enough healthy fats the day before and enough protein the day before, you should not be you should not be hungry the only time people get hungry is if they fall off the wagon and they eat carbs that they shouldn't have then you will wake up ravenously hungry the next morning because you've you've switched back over to being a sugar burner so when you're first in this whole transitional phase for probably 4 months if you deviate from the program you'll wake up starving and it'll take you 4 days to get back to the weight that you were at, the metabolic place where you were at. So stay strong, stay in fat burning mode. So, um, okay, so we talked about for ongoing weight loss, we are switching to 0.8 times your lean body mass. So obviously to know your lean body mass, you have to have a scale that shows you your body fat percentage. So, you take what you weigh on the scale, you take your body fat percentage, say you weigh 100, you have 30% body fat, you subtract 30 from 100%, and you have 70. So you take that 0.7, multiply it by 100, by 100, and there you get how many grams of protein. So for that person, which nobody is that actual size, I just did it that way for easy math, that would be 70 grams. Um, well, wait a minute. It would actually be lean body mass would be 70 out of 100 pounds, and then you multiply that by 0.8. So 56 grams of protein. 
So 0.8 would be your protein goal for right now for most days. And then you can go by whatever, as long as you get your minimum amount of coconut oil, oil in for your weight category, you can eat as many grams of fat. Added fat would be at your daytime meals, like avocados, things like that. Um, and then you want to keep coconut oil only with your meat still for right now. Um, the other fat calories can be from, you know, other things. Then when you go to do a pure protein day, you're just doing 40 to 50 grams of total fat and you're upping your protein intake to one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So I think I'm gonna just ask right now, does everybody know what their lean body mass is? Can you give me a thumbs up so I know if we, if we know what our lean body mass is? Do you guys know how to calculate this? Okay, all right. All right, all right, do that. I can't see everybody's hands, so do this. If you're, if you're in like a mayday, <laughs> if you're in mayday and you don't know how to do it, okay. All right, so we're all good. Everyone knows how to do their lean body mass. Woo, all right. So on your pure protein day, go up to one times your lean body mass. Only doing 40 to 50 grams of coconut oil. Do your salt, don't add any extra fats. Your body will accelerate your fat loss. You will accelerate your autophagy. You'll wake up with less body pain, less stiffness, and less body fat, and more energy the next day. It, so when you do your pr pure protein day, then you have to have a recovery day the next day, which means your protein is actually going to go up to 1.2 times your lean body mass just for that next following day. Your fat is going to be a lever that you learn how to use. Your fat can go to whatever your hunger is telling you, but the less fat that you eat beyond your coconut oil minimum, you can go up if you're having a day where you exercise really hard and you're like, man, I'm hungry, I need some more fat. Go ahead, have, your, have the balance of your fat in avocados in the afternoon um, before you go on to eating your meat. Um, if you're burning fat really well and you've been able to lose weight eating an avocado along with your meat, you don't need to take that away. You can keep on doing it. It's only for the people who are constipated or having any bloating or who haven't lost weight that I really want to be super strict with just coconut oil, meat, and salt at dinner. Um, so that's it. That's basically all you're going to do, um, with the pure protein day is you're going to, your day in, day out right now, it's going to be 0.8 times your lean body mass. You're going to follow your coconut oil minimum. And again, you're just going to eat, you don't have to eat all of the fat grams that it says to in the carb manager app. That's the limit in the carb manager app of the amount of fat that you can have. That includes beyond coconut oil. That includes coconut milk that you mix in with the Giving Greens. That includes the hemp seeds. That includes having an avocado. If you have room, you can have up to that much. But I want you guys to be really, really intentional about budgeting your fat grams first to get that amount of coconut oil in. Because again, that's going to be the easy pass. Once you've gotten that in, and once you start really maxing out your protein, protein because it the thermic effect of protein, say you eat all of your, uh, your protein in uh, baked chicken breast, which is really, really naturally low in fat. You're only get, you're, it's called, um, this whole strategy about the pure protein day is actually called a protein sparing modified fast because when you eat the protein, it spares your muscles. You eat a mac, you know, an accelerated amount of protein, a little bit more than what you normally would, and it actually increases your body's metabolism because the thermic effect of protein. You're eating, say you ate 800 calories of chicken, because 25% of that is used up in digestion of taking the protein and turning it into energy, it actually burns calories. So you're only getting about 600 calories. 
your body thinks you're fasting. And so since it's been used to burning 120 or 150 calories of fat every day, when you switch from having, you know, within your macro calculation, when you switch from one day having a ribeye steak that might have 30 grams of fat all by itself to having a chicken breast to fulfill your protein and it doesn't have as much fat, you're just going to just go right into turbo mode and start burning down your fat stores faster. So um, that is pretty much it. There's um, just do one to two pure protein days a week in this next week. See how your body adjusts. Do one, if you do a pure protein day, then do one or two recovery days in between. So, you know, one day on pure protein with only 40 to 50 grams of coconut oil, no other added fat, then boop, boop, boost up your protein to 1.2 to 1.3 times your lean body mass the next day. Get your coconut oil in, have whatever fat you need to satisfy your hunger. Um, you can have the full amount of fat, but again, you're listening to your body. You're learning how to um, use your fat as a strategic. I had a great quote from a Luis Villasensor from ketogames.com. He is a muscle builder, uh, a bodybuilder, and he has, um, I think he's from Spain, but he talks a lot about this concept of getting to um, regulate your fat flux. And that means that, you know, on days where you really feel like you need something more, go ahead and have, um, you know, the extra, you know, avocados and things like that. On days when you're not hungry and you don't feel like you need it, just do the coconut oil and um, don't do the extra fats. But some days we need variety. We want to make sure we're enjoying a lot of, you know, the taste, a lot of food is pleasure. And sometimes, um, you know, during stressful times like this, when we're, we're, we all have more stress because our schedule is different and everything, um, you know, it's fun to be able to use some of those cal calories by having some extra sauces or, you know, the garlic aioli sauce is really good to have on your burger. But um, it, on the days when you can go without it, go ahead and go without it, the extra fat, and just see how your body responds. Um, I am super excited to see um, how you guys do with integrating the Pure Protein Day. Um, at the end of this coming week, we're also gonna learn for people who are ready to graduate into the Keto Fresh program, we're gonna expand and then start incorporating um, some grass-fed butter or almonds or dairy. Now I will tell you, if you wanna stay in fat loss mode, you should not incorporate cheese. Like a lot of keto programs, it's cheese on everything. And people are not reducing their inflammation. And I get a ton of people who are like, I've tried keto and it didn't work for me. Um, and another thing, it's extremely constipating for a lot of people, but most people are allergic and you have to be off of all of the anti-inflammatory foods for at least six months of gut healing. The thing with dairy is you might not, if you've, anyone that has gut damage from gluten or grains, the, the lining of the digestive tract has these little tiny finger-like projections that are called villi. And that increases the absorptive surface of the digestive tract. But when we've been eating grains, they're all just like squashed and laying down. So food goes through much faster. We don't absorb as much of our nutrients. We don't absorb as much of our supplements because it's, it's just physically damaged. So the tips of the villi is the part of our digestive tract that allows us to break down the proteins in dairy. So for at least six months, I tell people, nobody can digest dairy for at least six months of gut healing if you're new to a gut healing program. But Probably in six months, you could try adding back cheese or something like that, and you might not have a reaction to it. When you have a reaction, once you guys are really have mastered your macros, how much protein, how much fat, and you get to adjust your fat burning and you really feel in, in charge of it, once you know how many um, grams of fat you're eating every day, you can add in um, cheese doing a test and you'll add the same amount of calories 
um, a, whatever the, say it's, a, you know, you really love Swiss cheese, you've been missing out on Swiss cheese. You can say, okay, I'm gonna have a two ounce portion of cheese. It has this many grams of protein and has this much fat. I'm gonna subtract it to my ideal day from last week, subtract it from that. And I'm gonna replace the same amount of calories as on other days when I was losing weight and feeling great. You add that cheese in three times for three days in a row and you wait to see if you've gained weight or if you've lost weight. If you're not having an allergy or, or an immune system response to it, if it's not irritating your gut, you'll keep on losing weight and you'll, you'll be fine. But a lot of people, what happens is eating the exact same amount of calories, they gain three to five pounds because their immune system has sent out an alarm. And just like when you twist your ankle and it swells up to protect your ankle and immobilize it so you can't move it and damage it further, when we eat something that is damaging to our immune systems, we swell up with fluid on the inside all around it to try to get it to get out of our body faster. So we're going to wait until the end of the week to introduce the additions and doing a little self-test to expand. But I typically most people are saying they are desperate for, um, you know, they, a lot of people say they want to have cheese again. I really recommend it for you not to do that if you still have, you know, any weight to lose. If you're losing weight and um, you're, you're having consistently good results, um, you know, I would keep doing what you're doing as long as you can. And then when you want to add something else in and you're like, well, it wouldn't really bother me if I gained five pounds back. But the problem is, then you've got to go back to day one of fresh start to lose that five pounds again, you, to wash that inflammation out and start over before you can add in another food that's not on the power food list. Like some people miss almonds, you know, and so we'll talk about those things and how to add, you know, nutrient dense whole foods in, how to prepare them properly so you have the least amount of reaction. Um, but let's just get through this first week of pure protein. In the last few days, um, since we had our wellness advisor leadership call, I did hear back with um, a lot of people. So just so the wellness advisors aren't confused, um, since we last spoke, I did switch gears because I wanted to make sure that we catch everybody in fresh start so everybody knows how to really maximize these results right now. So um, what time is it? Okay. So. Um, Sheila, would you like to um, take any questions? Maybe we could do questions for about 10 minutes. Sure, let's do that. So why don't, do you want to just have them type it out to just keep it more organized? Yeah, however, yeah, whatever you think, however you normally do is fine with me. Okay, so you all can go ahead and type your question out and then everyone can read it. Um, okay, so James went ahead and started it off. Okay, James, clarify the pure protein day versus the recovery day. Do you mind if okay. I uh, real quick? Yes. So I think the confusion I think a lot of people probably have is because you were going over some numbers. Um, is coconut oil, do you count that within your fat macros? Yes. On the pure protein day, the coconut oil, 40 to 50 grams, is the only fat that you have on that day. You don't have the other fat macros. So your total fat that you have on a pure protein day is 40 to 50 grams. And say your... Um, Okay, so if you're, if you're weighing up to 130 pounds right now, then you've got to have three tablespoons a day of coconut oil. So that's going to be around, that's, that's probably going to be around 40, it, that's going to be right on 40 grams of fat, three tablespoons. If you're, um, so for somebody who weighs 90 to 130, just getting their coconut oil in that day would take up all of the fat that they're allowed to have. And if you go up to 50, it's fine. Like if, but try to choose leaner cuts of protein 
um, to be able to get your protein fulfilled, your, your protein requirement fulfilled on that day because you're having to boost a little bit more protein. So in order to get one times your lean body mass, you're gonna to have to have a little bit more protein than you would on other days, but you're also getting less fat and you're not getting any other carbs except for like the lemon water. Up to, you know, does that make sense, James? Yeah, so if I'm a guy, like I'm 170 pounds and I have to have five tablespoons of coconut oil, Mm -hmm. would that put me over my fat grams or calories because that's okay that's okay that's okay if it does i mean whatever the range whatever it calculates out i was saying 40 to 50 grams per day just make sure that you get the only added fat that you have that day is from coconut oil and you're doing the leanest cuts because in order to get the highest amount of protein, you have to do leaner cuts. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if so you like, look if you look in the carb manager and you do you do like 50 grams of protein from a ribeye steak versus 50 grams of protein from a chicken, from chicken breast, you know what? Let's just calculate it. Let's everybody, unless you're you can't do it and watch at the same time, let's just get on carb manager so everybody sees it because I think when you see it, it makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to just go ahead and open up for tomorrow and I'm going to put boneless, skinless chicken breast and I'm going to make it go up to, um, a hundred grant. Oh, well, all right. So I would have to eat if I was trying to get to 100 grams of protein, I'd have to eat 11 ounces of chicken breast. Does everybody see that in their carb manager? Look at how many calories that is. It's only 539 calories from chicken to get your whole protein. So it's, do you see why it's called a protein sparing modified fast? Because you're only getting, you're hitting your protein macro of almost 100 grams of protein with only 539 calories. But when you're hitting your protein macro and you're getting your coconut oil in, you probably are not going to be hungry at all because you're, if you do this when you're fat adapted, if you do this like on week one, a fresh start, you'll feel horrible. But once you're in fat burning mode and you, you do a protein sparing modified fast day, your calories drop your protein goes up so you don't burn your own muscle. But if you're doing the coconut oil and you're hitting your protein macro going a little bit over, even though the calories are lower, you're not going to be hungry and your body will go into your own body fat stores and it will torch your own body fat for fuel. It'll make up whatever calories you've been burning. If you say you've normally been eating 2000 calories every day, and then you do one of these days, the other 1,600, no, the other 1,400 calories is going to come straight from your body fat reserves. Because once you're fat adapted, your body doesn't know the difference between the fat that you're eating and the fat that you're burning from your body fat stores. It switches back and forth. So James, if you don't have body fat to lose, you don't really want to do a pure protein day. You want to stay just making sure you get a minimal amount of coconut oil to help with your digestion, with your immune function, and you want to just kind of stay on cruise. If you're just trying to um, maintain, you don't need to do a pure protein day unless you're trying to dip into your body fat to burn more body fat to lose weight, or if you're trying to heal from a chronic illness, you still extend the fasting window, but you don't do it on a pure protein type of thing. You keep your fat grams higher. You just, you, you do the extended fasting window in the morning with autophagy to allow your body to have that selective time to repair the immune system, kill viruses, chronic inflammation, but you go ahead and you eat your full amount of fat grams. And if you're a guy that's in muscle building mode, you can even 
go up in your carbs. So when you're trying to, um, pure protein day is only for people who are trying to still burn body fat. So um, does that help clarify, James, what you're looking for? And then the after day, you said you have to do a protein recovery day. Could you yes. that one more time too? Yes. So on the protein recovery day, you, you don't limit your fat to 50 grams of fat. You still want to get your minimum amount of coconut oil every single day you're on fresh start. Every single day, you want to make sure that you hit your coconut oil minimum and you budget your fat calories for that first. So on the protein recovery day, you're getting that in and you're doing a little bit more protein even. You're going up another, you know, 10% more. So you're going from just one gram per pound of body lean body mass to 1.2 or for guys 1.3. So that's a, that is fat burning accelerating strategy for people who still have body fat to lose the pure protein day and that includes sun or does i know the other the point eight does doesn't include sun does a protein recovery day include or exclude the sun um on the protein recovery days you can deduct from the sun you can deduct the sun from your total got it thank you Does anyone else have any questions? I thought I saw another question pop up. Did anybody see what that was? Yes, let's see. Um, from Alejandro, in what days do we count and not count the protein from the sun formula? Okay, so at the beginning, we started deducting 50 grams from the protein because it was really a lot of protein for most people and we wanted to give a chance for digestion to start up um, slowly. If you all of a sudden just have a whole bunch of meat and you haven't been digesting meat, it can actually cause a stomach ache especially if you're not getting the salt in with it because the salt stimulates the hydrochloric acid production, which allows you to really digest your meat very well and turn it into energy. So on your regular days now, when you're on, you're just gonna stick by the Carb Manager app. If you're losing weight and you're cruising along great and feeling good, you don't have to do this accelerated fat loss day at all. It's really for only people who just want to hit the gas pedal one or two days a week, or if they want to break the fast, I mean, um, the plateau, say you haven't lost any weight in seven days. I don't really consider it a plateau till you've been doing everything like a standard day in and day out day where you multiply um, by 0.8 and then you have you get your coconut oil minimum, you don't have more than 20 carbs, and you can, um, that 0.8 estimator times lean body mass, you can deduct 50 grams of protein from that if you're taking two servings of some. You can. You can look at that as a gauge for if you're hungry, you don't have to deduct the sun. Because the more you build muscle and the more you raise your metabolism, you will be getting hungrier. And because of the thermic effect of protein, if you eat more protein instead of adding more carbs, not good, or more fat, if you're still hungry after you're deducting 50 grams from the sun, go ahead and eat more protein. That's what I'm going to say is because people are at different points of metabolic damage. So a lot of times when people are first starting this and they've been in a place of suppressed metabolism for years, they have a really hard time eating the amount of protein we've already done, and that's subtracting the 50 grams from the sun. So you don't have to subtract the 50 grams. It depends on where your hunger level is at. The more you exercise, the more your body is going to respond with more hunger, which is a sign of vitality. 
It's not a sign that the program isn't working for you. It'll be a different kind of hunger. When you go from, um, and, and it'll be on days when you work out harder. If you work out harder and, the, and you're, you're hungry by the end of your workout and you are feeling you, like you want something really solid, go ahead and go, or like on your protein recovery days, go ahead and go straight for the protein right after your workout. You, you can have coconut oil with your, your meat, like go ahead and, and do that on the, um, on the protein recovery days. So it's a gauge, you don't have to subtract, but the more, um, the higher, the more you bring your metabolism out of hibernation, you're going to be able to metabolize and need more protein. And if you're starting to try to build more muscle, you're going to need more protein. You're, you're bringing your body up to a higher level of function. So you're going to consume more calories at a higher metabolism. You're going to burn more calories. So when we're, there's a transitional place when we're coming out of that carb dependent where we get shaky if we don't eat and we get um, moody and grumpy that's a different kind of hunger. That's like the hangry hunger from unstable blood sugar. When you work out and you're in fat, fat, ad fat adaptation mode, but you work out and then you get hungry afterwards, you'll feel that it's a different kind of feeling. So just know that that's your range and you can base it on subtracting 50 grams of sun to whatever, if it's a regular day, it's 0.8. So, um, I'm just going to do from 100 grams, if 100 grams of protein a day was your, um, you'd multiply it by 0 0.8. Um, if 100 is your lean body mass number, you would multiply it by 0 0.8 day in and day out. And if you're doing a pure protein day, it would be Oh, wait a minute. It would be 0 0.8. Okay, so we're at 80. All right, so then you would deduct 50 for the sun, which would leave you 30 grams of animal protein as the minimum amount that you should eat on any given day. That's gonna be your minimum amount of protein. If you're hungry, when you start exercising more, you can still go up to 0 0.8. You just gauge it on your hunger. If it's a pure protein day, make sure that you're not deducting any of the sun, anything for the sun. You're still taking it, but you're not deducting anything for the sun because you're still going to be getting so little calories. I don't want you to slip down into hibernation mode. So you only do that for one day. And when we looked at like the chicken breast, you'll see your, pro your total amount of calories that day may only be like 800 calories. You can do that for one day without your metabolism sliding. But then on your recovery days for your two days after, it's better for you to not subtract for the sun as well. It'll help to give you more body protein synthesis, which means you'll, you'll recover faster, you'll build muscle faster, um, and you'll, you'll keep your metabolic set point high. But then when you go back to, when it's not when you're just going back to your regular day. So say we start on a Sunday, we're having a regular day, 0.8, you see how you feel. You're, if you're gonna have either 30 grams of protein or up to 80 grams of protein. If, it, if your lean body mass is 100, that would be multiplying by 0.8. Your top would be 0.8 times your lean body mass. Your least amount of protein that you would eat in your range would be down to 30. That would be day in, day out you go by how, how hungry you are with that protein. Then if you're gonna do, and you're eating the full amount of fat grams, starting off with checking off your coconut oil, but you're eating your full amount of fat grams that is your allowance within Carb Manager. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Everybody Dr. clear on that? Okay. Next question, this is from Elena. She's asking, if you are not hungry, do you still have to eat? Yes, um, at least at least get the amount of protein that um, that I was just explaining. So, 0.8 times your lean body mass. Um, 
would be, do you know what your lean body mass number is, Elena? Elena, I use here if I give a specific example. Um, let me un okay, she's unmuted. Hello. Elena. Hi Elena, do you know what your Hi. lean body mass number is? No, I don't. I'm I'm not very good with numbers. <laughs> okay, okay. Um so why don't we get me to work with you online to calculate that. So um, I would say for now, just work around between um, 30 and 80 grams of protein. So if you're okay. doing the two, two servings of sun formula, you need to have a minimum of 30 grams of additional protein that day, but up to 80. Because okay. a lot of times if you're not hungry at all, um, it can be that your metabolism is still suppressed. So I want you to hit your protein number, but you don't have to hit your fat number. If you're not hungry, you can use, you can go up and down with your fat, but the protein needs to stay very consistent in order for your body to not go into hibernation mode. Okay. okay? Yes. Thank you. All righty. Anybody else? There was a question asked, but we know the answer to this, so you can you can answer it, Dr. Marlisa, or we can answer it privately. But uh, Jason is asking if tofu is allowed, can it be reintroduced? No, no <laughs> tofu, because tofu is soy, and it's highly estrogenic. And estrogen dominance, so there's three hormones that block fat loss. Cortisol, insulin, estrogen. Estrogen in our food supply is one of the main causes of diabetes and insulin resistance. So we don't want to be eating foods that are loaded with estrogen. And the top estrogenic foods are soy, flax, and chia seeds. That's why you don't see any of those in the program because with men, testosterone is your number one fat burning hormone. And that's why we're doing animal proteins because they help to boost your natural testosterone level, one for building muscle, but also it reverses insulin resistance much faster. A lot of medical weight loss programs, you can do injectable testosterone and you can go from being diabetic to undiabetic in like a week if you wanna spend thousands of dollars a month. But no, nobody needs any estrogen in their food. That's why we do the free range chicken, um, the grass-fed beef because they're not exposed to the antibiotics and growth hormones, which are highly energetic, estrogenic. And also we, that's why we get rid of, you know, eating in plastic because of all the BPA estrogen mimickers, they attack the, um, the receptor sites for hormones. So men who eat a lot of soy actually are the highest risk category for getting prostate cancer because the estrogenic compounds, those proteins, they sit on the testosterone receptors in the prostate gland and it blocks the hormones from doing their job at keeping the prostate young and functioning and, and the way that it should. So soy is not allowed. It's never going to be allowed. It's never, it's one of the biggest anti-nutrients. It blocks the ability to absorb minerals in the gut. So one of the main reasons why we're insulin resistant is because we don't have enough magnesium. And if you eat, you know, soy protein, it actually, because of the phytates and the lectins in it, it blocks the ability for you to use the expensive supplements that you're taking to heal your body. So that is why we don't use soy. Is there any other question? Yes, one from Jennifer Quach. If you wanted to incorporate the additional Magna Cal D at bedtime, how would you take it if you're also drinking Restorix at night? Will Restorix neutralize the Magna Cal D? Yes, the, the Restorix will um, absorb some of the benefit from the Magna Cal D. So you want to try to incorporate that at least two hours before the Restorix. Ideally, the Magna Cal D should be four hours apart from your previous dose, so you get maximum absorption. So 
It might be easier to take the MagnaCal D in the morning when you take your sun formula. It won't break the fast at all. So it'll be fine. It just depends on the evening. If you have your meat meal, you know, at six, then you'd have to, it would be getting pretty late actually. If you have your meat meal at six and have two MagnaCal D then and wait four hours later and take the next set at 10, that means you wouldn't be able to do RestoreX until midnight. So that's pretty late. It, it'd be better to add the MagnaCal D in the morning. Thanks for pointing that out, Jennifer. Makes more sense. Okay, um, another question is, are we able to incorporate apple cider vinegar? Nope, no apple cider vinegar. It is fermented and a lot of people have overgrowth of yeast in the digestive tract and it will prevent um, the gut from healing at this stage. So we will wait. There's nothing, that's why we use lemon juice in everything because lemon juice has only positives and there's nothing, um, but there's no kombucha, there's no fermented things like vinegars because it can actually feed yeast overgrowth in the gut and block your ability to burn fat. Not everybody has it, but so many people have chronic toe fungus, um, uh, other kinds of fung fungal-based rashes, a lot of chronic sinus infections are fungal, chronic fungal stealth infections. And so we wanna starve the body of anything that feeds fungus and apple cider vinegar, you know, that is, it is fungus that ferments that. So that can feed, if you have any, um, you know, chronic toenail fungus or even rashes like on the side of the face or around the edges of the nose and mouth, if you have red spots, that can be a sign of chronic fungus. But I just find that so many people have chronic fungus and they don't even know it. If you get allergies first and then a sinus infection, you probably have a stealth fungal infection that is harbored in your sinuses. So you have to be without any of those fungus-based fermented things for six to 12 months. Um, and then, you know, just eliminating those things and then um, doing the intermittent fasting windows longer than 14 hours of fasting, two or three days a week, and your body will actually consume all of the fungus that's in your system. Your, you know, toenails will clear. I've had people that you know, haven't been able to grow a big toenail since they were in high school. And they go on this program and they're like, my toenails are growing back. And it's because, you know, we've, we limit any food that can possibly feed fungus. That's also another reason why we don't do nuts at this stage. That is something, sprouted nuts and sprouted seeds will be something that we could add back this time next week. If you're not having any, um, any other kind of stalls or issues, um, Sprouted nuts and seeds um, can, well, nuts and seeds in general can harbor a lot of mold, yeast, and fungus. And that's why most manufacturers roast and salt them to cover the rancid mold taste to them. Um, peanuts are especially high in mold, yeast, and fungus. So that makes a huge immune system challenge and people usually gain weight from them because it's nearly impossible to find them that doesn't have that black aflatoxic mold powder in the peanut butter. Peanut butter is actually really gross. I used to crave it all the time. It was like my number one cheat food until I found out what I know about food science. Two things that gross me out about peanut butter that'll help you to not crave it for the rest of this program are, so the government allows so many rat hairs what? per teaspoon of peanut butter because the peanut butter factories are so overrun with rodents that their hair is flying in the factory because they're like running over the pipes and everything. And as the peanut butter is getting processed, the government, they can't get rid of the amount of rats in peanut factories. And it is so gross. They, the government actually has a legal limit on how many rat hairs per teaspoon of peanut butter are allowed. Is that just the most disgusting thing ever? And... Oh. <laughs> yes, gross facts with Dr. Hurt. Um, the other thing is aflatoxic mold. Peanuts, um, they grow close to the ground. They're a very wet crop and they stay moist and they get very, very moldy. And so I don't know if you guys have Five Guys Burgers and Fries yes. in California. 
But when you go in there and they have these big open containers of the peanuts, you look at those peanuts and they always are covered with black powdery mold. And I'm like, who would eat that? They just, they look like a sinus. And I mean, they just look like a sinus infection waiting to happen, but black mold. And the, that black mold is aflatoxin. It is like the cancer causing mold. So the incidence of peanut, the also with children, they've done studies with kids that, that the kids who eat more peanut butter sandwiches have a much higher rate of asthma. Oh. And it's because of that chronic mold exposure that irritates the gut lining. It gets in your body. And if we can't detox things through the digestive tract, because we don't have enough magnesium and the kid's chronically constipated, which is really common, if it tries to go out through the skin, if it can't get through, out through the skin, it starts coming through the lungs. When we breathe, we are offloading toxins and things from the body. So a lot of times when people have chronic asthma symptoms, it can come from mold in our food. So that was a very long answer to why we don't have apple cider vinegar. <laughs> Okay, question from Desiree. Um, what is the max amount of salt we can take a day? Um, I would say with salting your food, you just can do it to taste, but really a healthy range is, you know, three to 4,000 milligrams of sodium or three to four grams, which would be about two and a half teaspoons of salt. There's there's lots. In fact, it's going to be in our uh, required reading for our wellness advisor program. There's a book if you're interested in reading more about salt. Um, this is really great. It's called The Salt Fix by Dr. James Nicolantonio. And he was a um, pharmacist. And then he actually left being a pharmacist to um, I'm gonna actually look this. I had to look this up for another group that I'm working with. Um, okay, he took a position as a cardiovascular research scientist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute. After joining St. Luke's, he published 200 medical papers in scientific literature relating to the impact that salt and sugar have on our health. Then he was invited um, a, to join a position as the associate editor of the British medical journal Open Heart the British Cardiovascular Society official journal. He spent 10 years examining the research on salt and rewriting all of our salt um, guidelines. And so he talks about, um, you know, the lack of salt is a major cause of obesity and type two diabetes. And it's really important. And it has to do with the way our kidneys um, respond to sugar. So when you first, um, let me see if I can find, but all of the new salt guidelines are like three to 4,000 milligrams per day, which is about two and a half to three and a half teaspoons of salt, which would be a lot if you actually were just eating meat and putting, you know, a full teaspoon on two different meals, that would seem, that would actually seem like a lot. But that's why I just say use real salt that is a full blend of minerals and trace minerals because there's also iodine in there, which is super important to help optimize your thyroid, which is like the governor of the whole metabolism. Um, but when you're not getting enough salt, you have more cravings for carbs because again, the body's instincts kick in when you're low salt. Sodium is one of the most essential electrolytes and you're not getting enough of that alarm signal gets kicked out by the kidneys, which tells your body to release insulin to bring in more water, even if you're not eating sugar. So getting enough salt actually causes your carb cravings to go away. Um, so I would be, you know, I would be better with you overdoing the salt a little bit than underdoing the salt, especially at the beginning when you're first trying to recover from insulin resistance because, um, it does help you to get over the sugar cravings faster. And then, you know, if you're retaining a little bit of extra water, it doesn't matter. It's the thing that helps you get, a, you know, you've probably heard of people that go on a ketogenic diet, get the keto flu where they feel tired or whatever. Salt is really one of the most important essential electrolytes to help replenish our adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are little tiny glands that sit on the back of the kidneys that help us to make adrenaline when we're under stress. So instead of reaching for a donut 
or a sugary carby snack, if you have, you know, even um, bone broth with added salt in the afternoon, as long as it's real whole pink salt that's not been heated or, you know, chemically processed, then that's, that's going to, you can't overdo it with that because you would, um, you know, you can basically go with your salt cravings if you're using a real, you know, whole fresh kind of salt. You can satisfy your salt cravings and then it'll help your weight loss, your insulin resistance to level out much faster. And then once the salt cravings are satisfied, they'll kind of die off. And the other thing is, is when you eat more salt, then you crave more water. So it helps you to meet your water goal too. So I don't really worry that much about salt. Um, as long as you're getting, you know, a really a good clean salt. Got it. Okay, great. And to kind of go along with that, um, Naya is asking, what is the truth about MSG? MSG is majorly fat storing. You don't want that. No MSG. Good to know. Okay. And then we have here, um, from Mary, can we fix our gut and fix being fat adapted without the sun tablets? You can, but it will take you a little bit more. Um, you can do it with real food. Um, but if you're recovering from a metabolic damage, you're going to be hungry when you're in that um, autophagy or that to do intermittent fasting, you're actually going to be hungry. So you won't be able to do it, you know, with feeling energized and building muscle as quickly. If you, if you take the sun out, you're going to lose body, you're going to lose lean muscle mass when you fast. So that's kind of why it's the magic protein pills, because it, it gives you energy when you take it. It doesn't have calories. It only has four calories, but your body thinks you're still fasting. So it protects your lean muscle. So for people who are trying to get fit, fitter faster, um, you build more muscle faster because you're not losing it when you would be fasting. For people who are trying to heal from a chronic illness, they have to engage in those periods of extended fasting so their immune system can be activated to kill the virus, kill the mold, kill the cancer, you know, heal, heal a long-term injury, any kind like chronic uh, tennis elbow or any kind of a chronic pain injury. You know, you can't heal from a chronic injury like that if you're not getting enough protein. And most people have way too much gut damage to be able to get it from just food because of the body pro protein synthesis factor those 10 tablets of sun, you're getting 99% of that is going to make brand new cells. So you'd have to eat 12 ounces of steak to get that same amount of new healthy cells. So you certainly can do it with just food, but it will take you longer and you won't be able to do it while building, you know, it'll just look different. You won't be able to build muscle um, and you'll be hungry. You know, it'll be harder switching over to being fat adapted with the protein tablets makes it easy because you are energized and you can fast without the bottom dropping out. It's a much longer transitional period. When you're not using the sun tablets, it can take four months to become fat adapted. And that's a lot of, I mean, most people don't stick with things if they're hungry and if their blood sugar's crashing, um, that people just don't stick with things for four months and wait for that metabolic shift to happen. So it just, it, it's like the easy pass because it helps it to happen in like less than a week. Got it. All right. So due to time, we have maybe like two or three more questions. Uh, people are asking to clarify how much coconut oil they can take to not break their fast. Um, okay, so let me just look on the card manager app and give you the exact number, how much you can take, because you can do it every hour or every two hours. Oh, wow. Um, okay, coconut oil.
Okay. So we started out by doing the uh, hydration first thing in the morning with the sun tablets, working out or waiting two hours, taking a second set of sun and then working out. If you still have a lot of body fat to lose, I would recommend continuing to do that, not having your first coconut oil till after that. There's another kind of fast called the fat fast. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of fasts, um, but this one is a good one, so it's worth, it's worth talking about. If you decided you wanted to have, get your body super squeaky clean, like you were recovering from an autoimmune disease or um, any kind of chronic injury or chronic illness, like a lot of people harbor several different kinds of viruses. Um, MS is actually the accumulation of five different chronic viruses that the person's immune system couldn't overcome. If you have some kind of a challenge like that, it's actually going to be better for you to do um, a season of, of some kind of fasting where your, your true fasting window, where you're just doing nothing but water and sun formula from the time you eat dinner at night until the next morning, you want to fast for at least 14. I mean, you don't start killing bad cells until the 14th hour. So like you want to go up till 18 hours or even 20 hours, which means you'd only have a window of eating for six hours or four hours. You wanna push that fast longer and longer, the more serious condition you're trying to recover from. So say you wake up at six in the morning, you have your first two cups of water and your first serving of sun, and then you do your email because it's still dark out or it's cold, you don't feel like exercising quite yet, you wanna be out where it's sunnier and a little warmer. So you wait till eight o'clock to take your second set of sun and then you go exercise at 8.30. You come back at 8.30, you can go ahead and have one tablespoon of coconut oil every hour and stay, you'll stay in a fat burning place. You can actually, some people, especially if you have more, like a lot of extra body fat, you can prevent yourself from ever getting hungry by having just a little bit of coconut oil every hour all day long until it's time to eat your meat meal. And what happens is, is if you have just enough calories to, um, to keep the edge of your hunger off, especially when you're getting new to fat adapted and sometimes you can flux back and forth, you can feel like you're eating something like the, the lemon coconut oil melt aways I was talking about. You could have a little one of those, I would say either one tablespoon per hour or up to two tablespoons every two hours. You can do that throughout the day and just have coconut oil mixed or coconut oil mixed with Beauty Boost and a little lemon too. You could have like that kind of little fat, they sometimes call them fat bombs. You can do that kind of a thing um, throughout the day to get your, you know, your fat allowance taken up. You won't get hungry. You'll definitely have a lot of energy. Um, and just having one meat meal to hit your, your protein goal. Um, I'd mentioned that guy, Luis from Keto Gains. He only eats one meal every day and he eats like 1,800 to 2,000 calories at one time of just whatever his lean meat is. And he doesn't do any sauces or anything at all. He literally just keeps it super lean and he is one of the most ripped people. I don't, I don't even, he's a shorter guy and he is so muscular from just doing this lifestyle for such a long time. But um, it is, it's actually, I, I think I had said it earlier. I think, I think I might've said it wrong earlier that you could have your coconut oil at the same time and it wouldn't stop your, um, it wouldn't stop your, your actual breaking your fast. It will, it will chain, it will prevent you from burning any, say you're having a hundred calories of coconut oil, it will prevent you from burning a hundred calories of body fat, but it will keep you fat adapted still. So sometimes people need a little extra boost to keep them going and kind of, um, it's more of like an adapted version of the fast. So it's not a true strict fast where you're having nothing but water, 
but for some people it actually increases their fat burning because they can stay on that consistently over a longer period of hours and it won't stop your autophagy which is your body selectively killing the damaged cells so it's kind of a tweak on the fasting um, it helps people to stabilize faster especially if you're diabetic and you're wanting to heal a chronic injury or something else it's not good for you when you're first switching over this soon to go with just like the sun and water or lemon salt water it would be you know it would be good for somebody who is um more of a chronically challenged situation after the 14 hours of fasting to go ahead and at least have a tablespoon of coconut oil every hour every two hours until you have your first meal okay Meat meal. Sounds good. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa. Now, it's going to be 11 p.m. where Dr. Marlisa is, so we want to give her time to rest. But there was one question that was asked three times, um, and it has to do with how to combat seasonal allergies. Okay, well, um, again, you guys are going to get sick of me hearing the same exact things, but... Coconut oil, lemon, and salt. If you do a little digestive self-cleaning day tomorrow, by just wake up, have your water, your sun, wait two hours, have your sun, and then instead of just take a day off from doing your veggie meal. You're going to have no carbs at all, except for what's in your lemon juice. And do hot water with uh, lemon and coconut oil and salt. And just do that for as many times as you feel like doing it, basically. But also with that, if you have vanali, take four vanali every hour with that hot lemon water drink. Make sure you're using freshly squeezed lemon, not bottled. Bottled lemon juice has high histamine content in it, and it can cause allergies to be exacerbated even worse. Aged food, you don't want to do batch, <clears throat> batch cooking if you're suffering from allergies. Um, because in the gut, we um, clear histamine load. And if that gets to be too high, because the food we're eating, again, like fermented foods like apple cider vinegar, extremely high, um, kombucha, those age kind of things, they're very high in histamine. So you want to avoid high histamine foods when you have allergy symptoms, because when you have a high response to the things in the air you're breathing, that means your immune system is being completely maxed out on the food that you're eating. So say you cook a batch of chicken today, don't cook enough for three days worth. Just cook, you know, keep things frozen until you're ready to cook it and just cook one, you know, one day's worth of meat at a time. Because as it ages in the refrigerator, even though it's not rotten, the histamine content on the surface of the meat um, as the bacteria just naturally multiplies, even with like just that, you know, the cleanest standards and everything, um, the histamine count will go up. So don't do major batch cooking if you're suffering from seasonal allergies because we want to keep the, the histamine content of your food as low as possible. One other thing I forgot to mention, and this is super important. When we were talking, I was talking with one of the coaches earlier today about people who are having... Um, chronic constipation, and one of the things that she pointed out to remind me of, which I just remembered, um, some people are not eating the right brand of coconut milk, and that can majorly contribute to constipation and digestive unwellness, as well as headaches, as well as allergies, because I don't pick out food brands just to be annoying <laughs> and difficult and narrow. It took me probably 10 years to find a good brand of coconut milk that didn't have chemicals in it. I was always making my own fresh, which took forever. And, and it literally takes like three hours to crack open a coconut. I just couldn't do that every day or even twice a week. It just, through the miracles that happen from coconut oil in your body are amazing. And if you have kids that suffer from allergies, asthma, eczema, it's all the same gene pair. My kids were those kids. I mean, I had babies that would like scratch themselves through their pajamas every night when they slept, they would be like bloody and miserable from eczema before we figured out fresh start living. So 
if you suffer from allergies, you've got to be very careful of the additives that are in your foods. And when we're eating as much coconut milk as we're doing on this program, you have to make sure that you're getting a clean source of coconut milk. So other brands that might say they're organic, not good because they still, if you read the fine print or the other ingredients, anything that has sodium metabosulfite or potassium metabosulfite, this is a chemical preservative and a food sterilizer. Again, grossed you out before about the rat hair and the peanut butter. This will gross you out about unclean brands of coconut milk. They add those liquid chemicals to the coconut milk when the coconuts are processed in unhygienic situations in order to sterilize the coconut milk so the container doesn't explode and grow mold, bacteria, whatever. It's a oh, chemical okay, preservative. Come on. <laughs> oh, so anyway, I thought somebody was reacting to my, <laughs> my coconut milk story. I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, anyway, you don't want sodium metabosulfite. It's also a lung irritant. It also triggers asthma. Um, so you don't want any of those chemicals in the coconut milk. So that's a big thing to watch out for. You also don't want anything that has it says coconut water and gum, because that means it's been cooked, killed, dehydrated, reconstituted with who knows what kind of water. Chlorine in it would be the least of my worries, but then they add the meta you know, metabosulfite, pot potassium or sodium metabosulfite to sterilize it. So even if they add dirty water to reconstitute the coconuts, it's not a good situation. Then it goes into a can, and the canning process itself to seal up those cans, it's at over 212 degrees. And so it gets cooked in the can. And that's why it has a different weird kind of gelatinous texture around the edge and all those chemicals. It's just, it is a gut healing disaster as well as it triggers a lot of asthmatic type allergic kind of reactions because of the chemicals effect on our lungs and the allergies and all of that. So. You want to make sure a Roy D, it is processed at a low temperature. It has none of those chemicals in it because it's in a very clean facility and it's processed at under 76 degrees. Those little juice box like Tetra packs, they don't, they're not heated over 76. So it's the closest thing to making fresh, real coconut milk yourself from a real coconut. It's not reconstituted, it's never been dried and then had water added. It is just straight pure coconut milk that's never been, you know, heated and all that. So it's not, it's proteins aren't denatured. It is, you know, it's pure and clean and it doesn't have any extra stuff in it. That's gonna, those toxic tagalongs cause all kinds of irritation in the gut as well as in the lungs for allergy sufferers. So um, everybody, you know, some people are more sensitive than others, but if you have allergies, asthma and eczema in your family, you are just genetically more prone to not all flowed toxins as well as other people. Welcome to the club. That's my family. We need more <laughs> omega-3s than most people. And we get triggered by chemicals a lot more than most people, which means if we don't live proactively, we're at a much higher risk of getting cancer. So di cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, the top three killing diseases. So that's why... I am a food Nazi. <laughs> We're getting rid of all the chemicals because they only trigger bad things. Thank you, that, Dr. Lisa. Did you want to say anything more? No, no. I'm, that was everything I had to say. And um, I'm so happy we actually got to the end of all the questions. So. This yes. is great. Okay, so we're <laughs> going to let Dr. Marlisa get her rest. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa, for your love, for healing people, your passion for educating the masses. And for all of those who feel like you may have missed something, we're going to have the recording up on the focus group so you guys could all feel <laughs> confident on ending this last week strong. So thank you again, Dr. Marlisa, for your time. We love you. We appreciate you. Mm. Get some rest. So I'm going to unmute everyone so we can all say our thank yous. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa. Thank you, Dr. Marlisa.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.